Good or evil, what is human nature? No human being is fundamentally evil because he or she is not genetically programmed by nature for gavalt and manipulation. The abysses of the evil, the gavalt, the revenge and retribution, the unhonesty and hatred as well as the jealousy and falseness, as well as everything else that is ausgartet and unworthy of human beings, only develop during the course of the life. And when these abysses of the evil open, it is not seldom the case that they open so wide that a human being who has lapsed into the evil can no longer find his or her way back to the good. No human being is by nature evil, acting with gavalt and in this form in one or another kind and wise ausgertet, because no human being is fundamentally and genetically coded for gavalt. The truth is that the evil in the human being is learned by him or her during the life, something which can happen even from an early stage of childhood or only later with advancing years. Indeed, there is no age limit placed on learning gavalt acts, evil, and every possible type of ausartung, which means that even a human being who has lived a good, peaceful, and gavaltless life can suddenly lapse into acts of gavalt in old age if he or she falls into the appropriate circumstances of living by means of which he or she leads himself or herself to gavalt. Genetic programming only imposes on human beings reaction patterns and protection mechanisms, which are archaic, that is to say, prehistoric reaction functions of fight, flight, or freezing. These are therefore reaction patterns that are possessed by many animals and other creatures, birds, fishes, reptiles, etc., and are controlled by the brain. In human beings, this is the oldest part of the brain, the brain stem. The brain stem responds to any conceivable and acute threat towards the conscious of the consciousness in a fully unconscious wise. Therefore, the consciousness cannot control the entire scenario of the threat response. The unconscious reaction process to the acute threat therefore prevents a control function of the conscious of the consciousness, with the result that the consciousness only becomes conscious of the whole procedure due to the unconscious perception and resulting feelings. Therefore, when faced by an acute threat, a danger, etc. And the brainstem responds with an unconscious perception, and therefore also with unconscious thoughts, which take place without the conscious of the consciousness being involved. This unconscious perception and the resulting feelings lead to a lightning reaction which results in a fight, flight, or freezing response, and only then penetrates the consciousness in a conscious wise. The whole thing is an unconsciously controlled protective reaction, but one which has nothing to do with any destructive aggression, and only penetrates the conscious of the consciousness as a conscious factor after the unconscious lightning response has taken place. However, if unfavorable conditions and circumstances are given during this procedure, this can lead to an outburst, namely destructive aggression, because control over negative impulses is not part of our genetic programming, Either rather, it is something that has to be learned through a healthy consciousness activity, and thereby through a sound thought, feeling, and behavior world. Analyzing human behavior leads to the recognition that everything in human life depends on the human being's complex coping strategies, namely satisfying his or her requirements, solving his or her conflicts and problems, rectifying his or her errors, and also gaining recognition from his or her fellow human beings. Looking for these capabilities in the human being, it is possible to find them in the cerebral cortex which gives rise to ever more complex and improved coping strategies which allow the human being to live rightfully according to creational laws and recommendations insofar as he or she grows up and leads his or her life in this climate of fulfillment. However, if the human being grows up in a climate where fear, brutality, oppression, gavalt, jealousy, torture, unhonesty, hatred, revenge, retaliation, or other evil in Ausartungan are the norm, the result will be that the defensive programs stored in the depth of the brain since ancient times, namely fight, flight, and freezing, will be reinforced, resulting in Gavalt reactions. Faced with evil, Gavalt or Ausartung, it is very quick for the only possible and successful coping strategy to be seen as returning the same evil, the same Gavalt and the same Ausartungan as the only means of self-assertion, and therefore as the only opportunity to assert oneself in relation to oneself or towards other human beings or a situation and wielding might oneself. This behavior very quickly becomes a habit, something which generally takes place in the early years of childhood and can no longer be dropped. As a result, human beings
things carry with them their learned evil, gewalt, hatred, revenge, and retaliation, as well as all Ausartungen throughout their entire lives, and it is therefore inevitable that this will lead to intermittent or continuous acts of gewalt. The entire behavior also contains within it a sustained and hidden unconscious fear of suffering disadvantages and harm, and this feeds a sustained burrowing destructive aggressiveness which further increases the level of fear and in turn ratchets up the learned readiness to use gewalt to an even higher level. In the end, the whole thing leads to murder and manslaughter, war and destruction, as has been the case since time immemorial. If a human being grows up in a climate of fear, brutality, gewalt, and ausartungen, or if the human being lives under such conditions on having reached adulthood, it is inevitable that he or she will take on these evil and negative forms by learning them and thereby once again open the door to the archaic or prehistoric defensive programs of fight, flight, and freezing something, which inevitably leads to gewalt acts. This is because there is no control over impulses in the conscious of the consciousness, because this was never learned or has simply been thrown overboard, and therefore a completely different behavior or pattern appears that cries out for destructive aggression, gewalt, revenge, retaliation, jealousy, torture, the death penalty, hatred, war, destruction, unhonesty, and all other evil things. All the nerve groups cry out aggressively for attack, although other responses such as flight and freezing as well as deceit, infamy, dignitylessness, contempt for human beings and cowardice may be tied up in this and come to the fore when attacked. This means everything is connected, and this interconnectivity is rendered particularly stable because the reward center is triggered by all these aggressions and ausartungen, and the brain is flooded with the neurotransmitter dopamine. Consequently, the human being feels himself or herself affirmed, big and powerful, in his or her aggression, gewalt and ausartung, and this is precisely what leads to the situation that he or she becomes addicted to his or her acts of gewalt and therefore always continues to strive for evil and unleash disputes, wars, and all-round death and destruction in order to satisfy his or her brain reward cascade by means of the neurotransmitter dopamine. In this wise, the human being mutates towards evil, aggression, gewalt, and all other ausartungen, as a result of which murder and manslaughter, conflict, jealousy, revenge, hatred, torture, retaliation, wars, the death penalty, and destruction become part and parcel of everyday life. Evil is rife not only in individual human beings when they have learned it, but also in groups and entire peoples. The reasoning of human beings is not determined by the question of good or evil, nor by the question of right or wrong. It is rather the human being's learning of evil that then determines their life and mode of life. As far as the individual human being is concerned, his or her mode of life is determined by loyalty towards his or her own evil in terms of groups or peoples. It is the groups or people's loyalty towards evil that enables human beings to allow themselves to be misused for the purposes of religious, political, philosophical, or ideological delusion, for the death penalty, and for wars. However, human beings are not born with a blind loyalty because they learn it from their environment. Fundamentally, human beings are born with a true conscience that strives after the good. This means the human being is not born with the power to attract evil, but rather with good and positive things, which is entirely in accordance with the creational laws, namely that every life form shall be born unencumbered by evil, that is to say destructive aggressiveness, that is to say gewalt. Therefore, it is the truth that human beings are born into the world with a good and positive social behavior and are controlled by this, which is something that happens long before they are even aware of it. This is the same thing as saying that every human being who possesses gewalt, evil aggression and ausartungen of any kind is himself or herself to blame, for this because he or she learnt this entirely by himself or herself during the course of his or her childhood or adult life. No human being is acting with gewalt by nature, he or she learns to be gewalt acting because of his or her surroundings, from parents, brothers and sisters, relatives, friends, acquaintances, and other human beings. Human beings also learn to be gewalt acting as a result of religions and sects, which teach murder and manslaughter as well as other evil gewalt and bad things, from politicians and the military who order wars and spread death and destruction, and from the penal code according to which torture and the death penalty are imposed, also, however, from gewalt-acting forms of sport, 
games and educational measures, etc. This means human beings learn about Gavalt from an early age, indeed not seldom. They almost imbibe it with their mother's milk, meaning that evil becomes seen as the only successful coping strategy in order to assert oneself against other human beings and the entire world around. This destructive aggressiveness, however, is not harmless because evil is fundamentally directed against its own origin as well, as can be seen by the fact that evil of any kind makes for unhappiness over time, even if the human being is not punished for his or her gavalt acting or otherwise evil actions. Yet it is the reality that an individual will come to harm sooner or later through having done evil, because psychic stability weakens over time due to the pangs of a guilty conscience. This does not apply to human beings who have become entirely brutalized and callous as well as irresponsible and conscienceless, something which also applies to those who kill as legal executioners or soldiers, knowing the judicial or military command is at their back and wrongly believing that their actions are rightful, which means that they do not develop a guilty conscience. It is the norm for doing evil, irrespective of what kind, that a guilty conscience will surface in the human being over time therefore undermining the psychic stability. This psychic destabilization leads to severe depression, to an increased risk of suicide, and the danger of becoming addicted to medicines, drugs, and alcohol. It is a fact that amongst human beings who have learnt to do evil and have fallen into this trap, the percentage of suicides, pathological cravings, and depressions is 530 times greater than in human beings who have not lapsed into evil. This also applies if the deeds have never been investigated and the wrongdoers have never been consequently punished. If a human being does not recognize that his or her evil actions are wrong and does not make an effort to return to the good and right way and to remain walking on this way henceforth something which is well within the bounds of possibility for every fallible human being, then that human being is running headlong into their own doom. Taking a more precise look at the evil that human beings do it is apparent that the evil contains something like a midpoint in the entire thing, a half-life, so to speak. As far as the human being is concerned who is doing evil, whether it involves gavalt acts or criminal activities with regard to financial gain, the whole thing is concealed under a cloak of might from other human beings or under a cloak of rapid enrichment. Nevertheless, everything will at some time reach its high point, a midpoint, or, as was mentioned, a half-life from which point things start to go downhill. That is to say, at which point a process of self-dissolution begins, energy, tails off, and psychic stability begins to fluctuate with the pangs of conscience. This is the time when energy for the good must once more come to the fore. Human beings must once again be creational, constructive, and loving of fairness, because the true energy of the life does not tolerate sheer egoism in the long run. For many of those who have learned evil and lived accordingly in their life, the time for learning and practicing good in accordance with creational laws and recommendations as well as practicing constructive and fairness-loving, things may occur during the course of their current life, whereas for others, this moment for living a good life comes too late, namely when the grim reaper is already at the door. Although a sense of fairness is anchored in the human brain even before birth, it has to be nourished and cherished in order to bring it to the fore. This nourishing and cherishing is of enormous importance, especially when the environment exerts its influence, since it is true that goodness depends on the firm volition of the human being as well as on whether he or she allows himself or herself to be influenced by his or her environment or not. This means the human being himself or herself must have a sense of goodness, nourishing and cherishing it and not leaving it up to the environment because the direct or indirect environment interprets the sense of goodness according to its own rules and discretion, understanding and benefit. Good and evil are always connected to praise or punishment, in which case the question arises in particular with regard to punishment of how much punishment the human being needs if he or she has done something evil, and whether the punishment helps to turn the evil in the human being to the good. Precisely, here it can be said that many punishments imposed on the fallible result in precisely the opposite effect, or even in disadvantages, and trigger thoughts of revenge, hatred, and retaliation, instead of achieving a turning to the good. The reason is that punishments only function, and the fallible only turn to a better and good form of behavior, 
if the punishments are also accepted by the fallible ones, recognized as correct, and are also understood as a means to a good end. This fact restricts the utility of the punishment to an enormous extent, simply because rules and punishments only bring a benefit if the fallible ones have accepted them, and accept the rules and punishments on themselves in order to act in a fair, gavaultless, and honest wise. Only in this wise are rules and punishments useful and establish important preconditions for economic growth, innovation, commercial and social success, as well as for technical, medical, and scientific progress, including progress in wisdom, love, peace, freedom, harmony, and consciousness-based evolution. Simyase Silver Star Center, 27 July 2008, Billy.